If your robot moves like this, but you want it to move like this, then what you need is speed ramping. You can do this simply by using the acceleration setting in more movement, but for greater flexibility, you can make your own ramp function. This can be a simple linear ramp or an S-shaped ramp, which gives a softer start and finish. We can look at the effect of the movement acceleration parameter with this simple program. We drive straight ahead for 80 centimeters and then stop moving. Here we see all three acceleration settings running together. There's not much difference between fast and medium, but slow is slower. Now we get to the important part, how to make your own ramp. To start with, we will make the simplest possible ramp and explain the program in some detail. Later, we will look at ramping with a line follower or a gyro controlled robot. Here we use standard movement blocks, but calculate the speed with this mathematical equation. Now don't go to sleep, it's not that bad. This ramp is based on time. We change the speed from MP1 to MP2 in the number of seconds given in parameter time. To do this, we first reset the timer to zero, then stay in the repeat loop until the time is over. During this time, the speed has to change linearly from MP1 to MP2. So we make variable MP using the equation, then we use MP for the movement speed. Here we see the calculation for MP. When the timer starts, MP equals MP1. When the timer gets to time, MP equals MP2. In between, MP changes from MP1 to MP2. Well, that's the basic calculation for a linear ramp based on time. This program uses three of the ramp white blocks we have made to ramp MP from 20 to 90%, then hold the speed, and then ramp back to 20%. We use a broadcast block to monitor the variable MP in the line graph. So there we have it, very nice. Now we can ramp the speed up and down for a defined time. The next my block makes it possible to ramp over a defined distance, which is more useful. Here the ramp is combined with a your follower. The your target is set before the block starts. It is compared to the measured your angle to form a proportional controller, very similar to a line follower. We first set the degrees traveled to zero and then calculate the number of degrees to travel from the distance in centimeters. We then stay in the repeat loop until we have completed the distance. We save the motor starting position in variable motor pause A. We subtract this from the current position to give the number of degrees traveled. We then calculate the speed in a similar manner to the time-based ramp. Using the absolute function enables us to ramp forwards and backwards. Let's look at the calculation. Degrees is the number of degrees to travel. A degrees is the degrees traveled so far. MP varies from MP1 to MP2 over the distance specified. Let's try out the ramp with a simple program. We can use three of the my blocks we have made to ramp the speed up and down. Wow, look at that. The motor power ramps look different. The time-based ramp is linear as it directly follows the timer. The distance-based ramp follows the distance actually traveled. The slow start is caused by the inertia of the robot. Now we will look at an S ramp and use it with a line follower. Of course, all three ramp types can be used with a yaw or line follower or a simple move block. Here we see the my block for the S ramp and line follower using light sensor D. We measure the distance traveled as for the distance-based ramp and then we use the S ramp function. This is more complicated mathematically. Don't worry if you don't understand it. We first have to scale the degrees to the range minus four to plus four. Then we use the S curve function to calculate MP. I won't spend too long on the details. You can pause the video if you need to, or ask me to send you a PDF file. Now we need a short program to try the S ramp. We use three of the my blocks to ramp the speed from 20 to 90, hold the speed, and then ramp back to 20. Wow, look at that. We can now compare the shapes of all three ramps. For the time being, I would recommend using the simple distance ramp. 
What we hope to achieve by using speed ramps is to move faster and more accurately. I think I'll have to make another video to look into this. Let me know about your experiences with ramps. If you found this interesting, why not subscribe to my channel? Here is a link to a playlist with my other videos. And thank you for watching.